<laughs> Earthbound by Artemis Greenleaf. Chapter 3 Warning I wondered if my father had remembered the orange juice incident from the day before. It was hard to tell with him. He wasn't good at shielding his thoughts, but the whiskey was. Dad sat in a dilapidated chair at the bar in his local, Doyle's Tavern, eating stale crisps out of a bag. A television perched on a wobbly stand attached to the wall at the end of the bar. The sound was muted, but subtitles were turned on. If Dad had ever heard the theme music for the show, with its phony harpsichord and spooky special effects, he might have taken it far less seriously. He was always at the pub before seven o'clock on a Tuesday night to make sure he caught the latest episode of Haunted Planet. Actually, he was at the pub most nights before seven, leaving Sheridan home alone. But Tuesdays were still special, especially this one. Tonight, Rodney Aldrich, the host and self-proclaimed psychic, was travelling to Cleggan. Personally, I thought Rodney looked like he'd escaped from a low-budget history reenactment, parted in the middle His peat-coloured hair hung in one length, almost to his waist. A pencil-width moustache circled his thin lips and joined up with a goatee that sat on his chin like an expiring fungus. He always wore a long, ruffled poet's shirt and tights, and I do mean tight, with leather boots. More often than not, He topped this off with a black cloak that flowed out behind him dramatically when he strode from room to room. Tonight we're here at Cassidy House in Cleggan. Restless spirits torment the current owners, typed the closed captioning. Then he leaned closer to the camera. And we will try and put them to rest. Ha! said a voice just over my left shoulder. I turned to see a woman in a high-necked green dress, which fits snugly down to her hips. Crisp white lace draped over a bustle at the back of her long, full skirt. She looked very dignified and stately, except for one thing. Her head was tucked under her arm like a cantaloupe. Even though I'd been dead for years, I'd never got used to ghosts popping out of nowhere. Just watch, she said. The camera panned across some trees and stopped at Cassidy House. It was not so big as a country estate, but larger than most houses. The building was a cream-coloured stone Victorian, rising from the intense green lawn like a scale model of a castle. Rodney greeted the owners of the property in the foyer, then proceeded into the cavernous living room, which was littered with antiques. He started to walk around with his eyes half-closed and his arms out. Suddenly, he stopped dead and started to shiver and shake, his eyes rolling. Here, typed the TV, there is great evil here, devil worship and human sacrifice. So many Many dead. Men. Women. Little children. Babies even. Rodney dropped to his knees and put his face in his hand. Tripe, scoffed the headless woman. He's a charlatan through and through. True enough, he has managed to entrap a spirit helper. In its last life, the spirit was known as La Duc Paris du Bouvier. But that loathsome Aldridge creature disrespects and debases him by calling him Perry, as if the Duke were some common dodger like himself. So he's a fake then? 
I hoped. He is not entirely without gifts. He can, on occasion, see things. But he does not correctly interpret his visions, even with the help of Duke Bouvier. He may, perchance, use elements of his clairvoyance, but he usually has concocted some elaborate romance before he even arrives at his mockery of a ghost hunt. He seeks only to appease his dullard television viewers. I suppose it could be worse. I didn't really know what else to say. It is. What do you mean? The woman turned slightly so the face under her arm could get a better look at me. This cretin attempts to perform exorcisms. His level of expertise is insufficient for the task. He always bungles these rites, such that things are worse off when he leaves than when he started. Really? How? I wanted to hear the dirt on Rodney Aldridge. Primarily, his mendacity makes him weak, that liar. And he hasn't the strength to compel those who do not wish to go. He merely angers them. Perhaps a fresher spirit, who is not so fixed to a place, could be removed, but not most of us. Her eyebrows were raised, and her lips were pulled tight over her teeth. She looked like she'd been sucking on a lemon. Secondly, he has chosen the wrong verb in his Latin banishing rite. Instead of a beo, to go away, he says a deo, which is an invitation to come and visit. Thus, he invites in whatever lower astrals happen to be within earshot. Some of them are highly parlous characters. I didn't know what parlous meant, but I was sure it must be bad. My dad's put his name in the lottery for a haunted planet visit. Under no circumstances must you permit Rodney Aldridge anywhere near your house. During his visit to our estate, he conjured up such a vile entity that most of us cannot abide being around the thing. The woman rolled her eyes, and then her body shivered. Us? Ghosts are like potato crisps. You can't just have one. Yes, the house ghosts, half a dozen all told. Among us only Finn Maguire is colder than that entity. It fears him. The remaining five, no wonder. But worse things are afoot. With his haphazard expeditions and slipshod rituals, Aldridge attracts parasites. You mean like ticks or leeches? Funny. I missed the sensation of crawling skin. She looked at me as if she thought I was daft. Are you not familiar with parasites? She raised one eyebrow. I desperately wanted to laugh. It was very hard to take a talking, severed head underneath someone's arm seriously. What I said was, Um, well, I... She pursed her lips. The... How do you not know this look? You will instantly recognize a parasite when you see it. Are you familiar with the appearance of a cuttlefish? I nodded. They're kind of like small squids with short tentacles. Now, think of a monstrous cuttlefish with glowing red eyes, whose tentacles are filled with rows of clawed suction cups. Each of these cups has a mouth. Should it get its hooks into you, these mouths will suck the very life out of you. The living have an advantage. The body provides a buffer, so the parasite can't kill the host. You and I have no such baffle. It feeds on eteric energy, and we are nothing but. It would consume us completely. They relish hot, red energy, H anger, hatred, fear. They cannot control a human life like a puppet, but they can insert thoughts into the host's mind. Although to some people, they are perceived as voices. Most of the time, the victim doesn't even recognize these ideas as foreign. Voices are accepted as divine conversations. Have you noticed that from time to time, a person will make the headlines by inexplicably going on a murderous rampage. 
She paused to look at me, and I nodded at her. That individual has a parasite infection. Is there any way to get rid of them? I wished I had some way to take notes. They gravitate towards bad-tempered people prone to violence with lots of red energy. If you were very calm and relaxed in the cooler spectrum of colours, they would be less attracted to you. They might even spit you out, as it were. But not if they are very hungry. Bad-tempered people prone to violence, like Dad. If what this lady said was true, then Sheridan could be in mortal danger. Then I smiled to myself. Haunted planet visits were chosen by a lottery. Dad has never won anything in his life. But there is always a first time for everything. Earthbound by Artemis Greenleaf. This work is licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivative Works 3.0 United States License. Environmental sound effects used in this podcast were provided by www.freesound.org. Please check artemisgreenleaf.com for details of specific samples used. If you'd like to leave a comment or learn more about the other projects in progress, please go to www.artemisgreenleaf.com. Dandelion girl, watch your play.